I mean, good thing I'm wearing glasses. I got a few holes. Oh, yeah, it. thanks. I gotta go clean up. I have been nothing but wear your diesel fuel since for two days now. Oh, oh, man. Welcome back to Watkins DIY. My name's John, and in this episode, we kick the can. The diesel jerry can, that is. It's been six months since we first noticed the puddle on Don's floor as our bus was leaking diesel fuel. And today I'm proud to say that we're gonna get the fuel tank in, get all new lines run, get a brand new fuel filter housing on, and get the bus off of the can. We thought that we had it made. We had checked out the fuel tank and it looked really good, but there was a lot of stuff hidden behind that dirt and debris that had been caked on there for 70 odd years. But when we took everything apart, we noticed some really cool tech from 1953. The first bit of tech that we noticed was, hey, there's no fuel gauge. After a lot of research, I found out that the drivers and the fleet managers used to use a stick to probe the tank, and that would tell them how much fuel they had in it. The second cool bit of tech that we found out about was the whistle on this bus. When you used to fill up this bus, air would be pushed from the tank and that air would pass through a whistle and you would have to physically listen for it. When it would stop whistling, your tank was full. Those two things are pretty gosh darn impractical for people that want to take this bus cross country. I can't be carrying a stick around with me everywhere. So as we fixed this system, we also modified it. We put a new style fuel gauge in and we went away with the whistle just because it was more plumbing that didn't need to be in there but it's done. And another big milestone for the bus, a 100 gallon fuel tank that doesn't leak and a brand new fuel delivery system. So the first thing that we gotta do is put in this little bracket that I made last weekend with dad. Just adding a little bit of Loctite onto everything. So this new plate is the new dual fuel housing plate and it will now hold spin-on filters. Kate, you, you need to push on them please. Thank you. See if we can get this thing to drain. I just don't particularly want to make a giant mess on Don's floor. This big bracket out so that we can get behind it because you see this line right here? Yes. This line has to come off. That way we can take this line and hook it up to it. Mm. So. Okay. I noticed that there are the two bolts right here. Okay, are they half inch? Uh, no, no, I can't get on. <sighs> okay, so what you're gonna do, now they broke it free. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll take that. Okay. You're gonna put one finger here, down with your pointer, and then you're gonna ratchet, stop, let go, let go completely okay take your left finger your left finger now put it on the lid no the lid the lid the lid put it there okay now ratchet it up there we go there now wait wait stop Pay attention here, okay? We don't want a ton of fuel to come pissing out, okay? okay. So if, if you're starting to lose a bunch of fuel from here or from there, stop and tighten it back up, which is going the other way. Okay. And then we'll, we'll, we'll get some pig mass down. Well, the more 
I'm warming up. See if I get it to, to soften. It's already getting a little, it's already starting to soften. Ooh, it's not smoking. It's a diesel fuel that's spilled. It's getting a little warm, I guess. Okay, let's see if I can get that up. This one me. Bend this like this. Just like this. And this goes like this. Wow, it's hot, hot, hot. Whoa, that line is hot! <laughs> This is the right thread. But it seems like it's going on now. Nice and snug. Yeah, snug. I kept it, I turned it away so now it's not touching this one. You don't want the hoses to rub. If they're gonna rub, you think it can't get past it, do this. Like someone else did back, I don't know. Someone can't, they taped them together so they stay tight together so they don't rub and rub their way through and make a hole. But I just, I turned this one on purpose so see you got a hole, a good, you know, quarter inch space inside here. I'm helping Jonathan and Kate make some uh, fuel lines for this thing. We need two. We need a, a fuel line that comes from the gas tank into the motor, and then we need a return line that goes from the motor back to the tank. Jonathan got this little machine here. It's really cool. It straightens out, straightens out these lines. It's the coolest thing ever. You get this whole mangled up thing, and next thing you know, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> It's amazing. You run it through a different, couple of different ways. And boy, it, it takes the, it takes the bend right out of it. This kit came with an automatic style tubing cutter. And if it's soft or hard, steel. What they mean by hard is like steel line. Soft is like this, this nickel copper stuff. And it has a little line here. You screw this in until it hits to soft, and then all you gotta do is just twist it, and you just keep buzzing around. And it self-adjusts, and all of a sudden, after about, I don't know, 10 times around, it, it comes off. There it is. Ta-da! I'm going to double-check my flare to make sure it fits this line, and it does. Ah, here's a pro tip for you, okay? Don't be in a rush. Second-guess everything. Make sure that the brass fitting you'll be using is facing the right way, so it screws in. After you make the flare here, it screws in. You wouldn't believe how many times in 45 years I put this thing on backwards. <laughs> it happens. The second tip I have for you is don't forget to put this on. Sometimes you can cheat and put it this way and go back onto it. A lot of times it's not really a cheat, it's a save. But uh, just don't be in a rush. Just take your time. Put this guy in here. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait. Put the brass fitting on first. I'm gonna put this guy in here. There's a line. I don't know if you can see, there's a little line here. You have to have that much sticking up. See, so that's, that's perfect. Now you notice I didn't measure, I just stuck it there. Because well, I've used this tool so many times, I know what's, how much supposed to stick out. I do check it, but when I first stick it in there, I'm, I'm normally pretty close. Put this guy in here. Put this guy. Then we'll take this guy. Put this guy in. And just crank this up until it stops. Pretty simple. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm making what's called a double flare. So what's happening? is I'm taking the, this piece of pipe, and, uh, it, it's bubbling it out and coming back around. I'll show you what I mean in two seconds. Take this off, and then they take this off. Okay, and you see, the, you guys have a little uh, the hollow inside here, and you see I it pushed it into its hollow and then kind of curl the edge in, right, like this. Next thing we do, put this back on, this back on, grab this guy, put him back in, okay, crank this in, crank it in, crank it in, and that's it. We're done. Crank this out, crank this out, okay. 
still find this there. Put this out. Okay. And this is what it did. It pushed that uh, over piece okay, and it pushed it right in. So it's like this. Okay. That's nice and smooth and clean in there. Okay. We have a flare that looks like this. And that's what you got. You got a double flare. We flared it out and in. I get the fitting. So yeah. go from this one, uh, out, up, over, and that way. Yep. Where's the second? This is the second one. And this one goes where? This is the out. Yeah, and that goes this and one back to this guy here. Correct. Yep. Okay, and that's just so that needs to, to come this way, well, or, or however which way well, you, I don't you see wanna, it fit. I don't want to get in the way of our filter changes. Okay. Oh, is this going to be in the way of our filter change? No, it shouldn't. That should just. Does it have to go up and up and over? Uh, hopefully. <laughs> Apparently not. Okay, good. The other one's on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. And even if we had to uh, move it over, I think it still should be okay. Alright. We might want to put a gusset. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. mistake. I didn't realize that when dealing with fuel line fittings for the spin-on type filters that the AN fittings were so special. So I thought that I could just make a flare and connect everything. It turns out I need these special fittings and I didn't have any. But I called up a couple friends and one of them did. So I just got back from his shop and he saved the day by having not one but two of the exact fittings that we need to finish up the fuel system. Now that we got the fuel in the tank, we're gonna to try to prime the system. Do you have air? No. Not yet. Stop! Oh, what? It's pressurized. Well, I got fuel. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, look at you laughing. <laughs> I think that came out like a shot. Oh. Oh, I got fuel off the line. <laughs> yeah, okay, good for you. Okay. I got I got fuel in my face. That didn't take very long, did it? <laughs> oh, you know, I wore a crappy shirt just because of this. I didn't think I'd go wear it. I mean, good thing I'm wearing glasses. I got fuel. Oh, oh yeah, it. thanks. I got to go clean up. I have been not to wear your diesel fuel since for two days now. Carefully. Let's see here, how much does it want? It wants one full turn once it makes contact. So that's contact right there, so that means BF12 is all the way back. Right there. You want me to try to do a little more? Sure, I mean, it's, it's on there. Yep, that's tight, man, I can't get any tighter than that, man. You can 
you put over the top. Yeah, yeah I know. So. I'm trying not to get you. Why? You're, <laughs> why you think I'm going to get a little diesel fuel on me? It would be horrible. <laughs> Thank you, Kate, for your words of encouragement. That's what I'm good for. So what is this one? This one's three quarters. Okay, so just made contact. The three quarters are going to be over yeah, here. That, that, yeah, the scan code will be over there. Nope, that's it.